that was extremely well researched and so she's made your job I think slightly tougher. Uh, we have Dr. Ronnie Jig, George Nest who's director of Lokma Services in Shankar Netral at Chennai and he'll be speaking on the role of uh, functional uh, tests in glaucoma diagnosis and progression. Welcome sir and thank you for again being part of this instruction course. Uh, thank you for the invitation Mayav, it's nice to be here among friends. And uh, so Nagalakshmi has given me uh, a lot of things to try and rebut and let me see what I can do with that. So I'm going to speak about curves, I'm going to speak about technology and I'm going to speak about what actually matters. And when we talk about structure, she's already defined what this is, so I'll let that be. She's already shown you the slide, and this is the curve I'm talking about, this curvilinear slide that everybody says that, you know, this is what happens. Threshold values drop late, and... But the reason this happens is because, as physicians, we are mathematically challenged. And we could not deal with the huge numbers of apostips. So what everybody does is they just convert it into log, so we now have to deal with numbers only from 0 to 40, and we are happy with that. What happens when you transform this again? When you transform this, you will see that take, take. when you see this, so this is what the curve looks like. You transform this to in two ways. You can either transform a le the logarithmic to uh, linear, or you can transform the linear to logarithmic. Both ways, you will see an absolutely straight line. So it's actually a linear relationship between RNFL loss and threshold loss. The problem is, even though they change similarly in glaucoma, our ability to, inability to detect very early change is probably a result of the limitation of technology and physiological variations, and not really because of what is happening in the disease. So now you think I've already handed over the debate to her. Hmm? But the fact is that if you want to pick up every single patient with glaucoma, on a structural test, you will require 20 to 30 percent ganglion cell loss to be able to do that, which is very similar to the number that she showed you for visual fields. So it's a bit of a caveat if you want to diagnose glaucoma, both are equally good or equally bad because of these two reasons. And she spoke to you about red disease, and this is a problem with imaging. You'll end up with something like this, you look at it, there's red all over the place, but all of us sitting here as glaucoma specialists will tell you that's a large disc, there's nothing much to worry about it. But people who are not glaucoma specialists would be concerned, and this is what the field looks like, this is what the other eye disc looks like, and this is what the field looks like three years down the line without any treatment, nothing is happening there. What about fluctuation on perimetry? And she did allude to that, saying it makes it difficult to assess progression. So I'll share with you the European glaucoma optic disc appraisal study for progression. So 88 ophthalmologists were given stereo photographs of 54 eyes, and they had to decide whether this was stable or progressing. And this was the agreement between glaucoma specialists. Not even, so we could not agree with each other also whether the disc is progressing or not. So in terms of fluctuations on perimetry, we'll talk about fluctuations in assessing progression. And this is somebody whom we have, who is, you know, got fairly long follow-up, and those are what his OCTs look like. And what I would like you to look here is at this bit. The RNFL thickness progression map is actually showing an improvement. Not possible, right? So you talk about fluctuation on perimetry, you get fluctuation on the OCT too. So glaucoma progression, when you look at structure versus function, and I'm not going to talk to you about this. this is a study that we did at uh, SN. It's unpublished, so it's a little, little unfair to you. But what I will just show you is that we were looking for progression on the OCT, on the GDX, and on the HRT versus visual fields. And, uh, um, and this is what we found. We found that the maximum number of people showed progression on the HRT and the minimum on the visual field. And for the visual field, we use a progressor software, which is actually point-wise comparison, which is pretty good. But what's interesting here is, if you look at the OCT progress group, nobody progressed on the other two tests. If you look at the HRT progress group, one person in that group progressed on the GDX. If you look at the GDX progress group, nobody progressed on the other imaging text. So they don't even agree with each other when it comes to whether some somebody's progressing or not. So 
I've shown you that assessing structural damage is not the same with different devices. It's not the same with different OCTs. And the normative database is important, like she mentioned. And what the most important question to me is, we don't know how, what's the normal rate of RNFL loss. So whatever change you're seeing, is it because of age or is it because the disease is getting worse? And that's information we don't have. And this is uh, something like my journey in ophthalmology. I joined in 1996 when OCT was, one was involved. Second generation came out in 2000. Third generation in 2002. Fourth in 2006. And now you're looking at the swept source OCTs. And the nice part about it is none of them are backward compatible. GDX came in 1992 and by 2015. HRT came in 91, stopped production two years back. They claim they're going to support you, but it's on the threshold. So basically, these machines are going to be resting in peace, while our glaucoma patients are going to continue to need to do a new test on a new machine to figure out what needs to be done. And this is a, uh, just one of our patients, and you can see we have something like 12 or 13 years follow-up on him, and these are his HRTs over time. And now I have to try and get a new baseline on him because the HRT is going to go out of place in here, but the fields are still okay, the fields are still backward compatible by 15 years. So uh, my argument is that structure, function is more important than structure. It does not matter what it looks like, hmm, as long as it works. And I hope that I managed to convince you of it, even though in this case, structure looks much better than function. Thank you.